I am extremely delighted that you are spending some time with Miss Sumita today. Let's begin our new poem. Today, let's discuss the poem Daffodils by William Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud is one of the most famous and best loved poems written in the English language. It was composed by romantic poet William Wordsworth. The poem is based on one of Wordsworth's own works in the countryside of England's Lake District. This poem is a wonderful literary piece of nature's description. In the poem, daffodils have a long-lasting effect on the speaker. It explores the relationship between nature and humanity. The speaker himself is a great lover of nature. That's what we find in this poem. I hope, dear students, you have a book in front of you. Let's begin to understand this poem with the mindset of a poet. Shall we start? Okay, let's begin our first stanza. The poem begins with the sentence, wandered lonely as a cloud, which is the part of simile. He compares his loneliness with a single cloud. The poet was walking aimlessly down the hills and valleys when he is captivated by the startling view of nature, especially a beautiful field of daffodils. In the first line, the poet uses the word lonely, which means he does not have any company just like a cloud. In the third line, the poet is giving you the imagery of being a cloud. He was attracted by the sight of the golden color daffodils. The poet has personified daffodils in the third line. That is, when all at once I saw a crowd. Here, the crowd shows the number of daffodils. Where did the poet see the daffodils, dear children? Can anyone tell me? He has seen the daffodils besides the lake, beneath the trees. Fluttering and dancing in the breeze, this is an example of personification where the poet means daffodils are being compared to human beings. They were fluttering and dancing in the brills just like a human being. Therefore, it is called personification. The poet uses first person here, that is I, to personalize what he says and to give more depth and also meaning to his words. The power of language is used here. The poet also uses alliteration, that is, beside the lake, beneath the tree. There is repetition of the sound B. Now, let's move on to the second stanza of this poem. First line of the second stanza, it is said that, continuous as the stars that shine, which means, here, the poet was compares the endless row of daffodils with countless stars. Simile is used here. Daffodils are compared to the stars that shine on the Milky Way, which means the daffodils are not only uncountable, but also dancing with full energy. Daffodils are unending. What do you think? Daffodils are compared with the Milky Way children? It is compared because Milky Way is a galaxy in which contains entire solar system. So, there are billions of stars. He is comparing with the solar system, the Milky Way stars. So, 
It is almost like the golden yellow daffodils. He saw as many as 10,000 in just one glance daffodils. They were dancing and marrying in a happy manner. Here, the poet used hyperbole. Example of hyperbole is 10,000 so I at a glance. Which means a lot of daffodils, but he must not have counted them. They're all at a glance. This is an exaggeration. They stretched in never ending line. Yes, the flowers were spread in a vast area, but that is surely not never ending. Tossing their heads in sprightly dance, this line tells that the daffodils are humans that can dance. This is personification. Let's go on to the third stanza of this poem. The waves are dancing and the daffodils are also dancing. So, who is a better performer here, children? In other way, who is performing well? The daffodils or the waves? According to the poet, it is the daffodils, sparkling waves in glee. Daffodils are dancing happily. Therefore, the poet is standing and watching the view, feeling very happy. Daffodils are referred here as a person. Hence, the poet uses personification. Another personification is that in such a gigantic company, poet considered the daffodils as his bigot company which means cheerful and optimistic company. Last two lines of this third stanza, the poet used alliteration, that is, against and gazed. Consonant sound of G is used here. Another one, what wealth? W sound is used here. The poet thinks the amount of wealth or a kind of wealth that we get from nature. When we look at the nature in the minds of a poet, we derive a lot of happiness and enjoyment just glowing at the sight of the daffodils. This is real wealth, much more than the material ones. The poet uses the word wealth, which means, in his sense, it is peace, joy, and life are worth more than money and other worldly wealth and pleasure.